Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and I am so happy that you stopped by to visit today. You know, last fall, it was late September in 2022. Beautiful day out. My friend and I had a really great opportunity to meet to paint together in a garden in Littleton, Colorado. So this is some footage from back then, and uh, I wanted to share it with you because Mother's Day is just around the corner and painting a rose is an awfully good idea. So let's go check out the War Memorial Rose Garden in Littleton, Colorado on Bemis Street. Are you ready? Here we go. garden is full of these beautiful roses and if you ever get a chance and find yourself in downtown Littleton look this up on Google Maps it'll take you right to it it's on Bemis Street just south of the main downtown street it's just so beautiful there all of the roses are planted in concentric circles and there's grass to walk on in between them so that you can see the roses from every single angle there's a really cool sundial a gazebo a fountain it's just a great place to be of all of these pictures, feel free to paint any of them. I tried to get some buds and some uh, roses that were fully in bloom, but this is the one I like for our project today. So let's see what we can do. All right, I've got the drawing done. I have a jar of water, this was empty. It's like, this is a fun palette. It's got 36 wells in it and it has this part that lifts out. And then it has a silicone seal here so that when you close the paints up, you're good to go. So I have here three brushes today. I've got a number 12, a two, and an eight Princeton Neptune round. So I thought we'd try those. And the paper that I'm using today is Fluid 100 640 GSM 300 pound paper. It's a little thicker than uh, typical watercolor paper, but it's, a, it's really fun to use. I like it quite a bit. I don't have to tape it down because it's so thick it won't warp at all for us. Um, the color that we're going to use is this one here, which is uh, Opera Pink. So I'm going to get some of that going. What I should do before we really start is I should get all my paints kind of prepped here. Uh, this little portion here, just where I'm finishing the sketch, will be on double speed. And then we'll get right back to it here in just a second. Okay. So this first petal is in shadow. So I'm just going in with water. And you can see I've got just a little bit of pink on my uh, brush left over from mixing that opera rose, which is okay. I just want to get that area wet and then towards the ends of it here there's a little bit more pink down here and then almost a, a burnt sienna it's kind of like it's uh it's a little bit dying down here so we'll fill in those brown spots like so and I'm just tapping the very tip of my brush into this wet area. So now I don't want to work on the one right next to it because this is wet and I don't want it to seep all over. So now I'm just going to go around to another area. Let's try this one up here on top and we'll get some more of that opera rose. In this one we can see the pink coming in here and all along the edge here. So let me zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just tapping my brush right along the edge of this petal here. So I'm just going to bring that pigment in from the edge, just basically uh, putting it in. Now I've got the alizarin crimson. Right around the edge is where you're going to put the pigment and then just pull it down gently with your brush. And with that wet on wet, that'll really help soften those edges. And as I work my way around here, you'll see that by using the very tip of your brush, you really do have quite a bit of control. This is an eight round, and I've got no trouble pulling this pigment down toward the center. This is really very methodical work, and uh, it's quite relaxing. You're just going to go around petal to petal, basically get it wet, and then drop the pigment in around the edge, and then pull it toward the center. 
and then that way you can add the shading and nuances right as you go and even you can see the petal on the bottom that we did how nicely that uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber rather is bleeding into that pink and then the top you can see that alizarin crimson really is bleeding nicely into that pink wash as well so we're just going to continue around here i've got this portion on double speed but i'm going to skip quite a bit ahead and uh, we'll go to the second layer of washes around these petals the one thing you just want to remember is don't do one petal adjacent to another because what will happen then is um, you'll end up with uh, bleeding in between and that that's not the end of the world if you do do that here i'm right next to you the other one but i'm being very very careful but what you want to do is to be sure and not let those bleed if you do like i said it's not that big of a deal you can go in when it's uh, dry and separate that petal once again for the shadows i'm using some Payne's gray because i really like the cool tone to it um, that depends on your Payne's gray i mean it's not gonna it's not probably not gonna tilt warm but it'll go uh, from varying depths of gray to blue you could mix your own gray if you like you could use the burnt umber and uh a cool blue, a phthalo blue would be quite nice with this, um, or you could use an ultramarine depending upon how you want your light to look. With the pinks, I think it looks really good with the cool shadows in there. And that Payne's Gray works very well. Um, so yeah, this is, you can see where the shadows are resting. You want to be sure and notice those because that, in addition to where you put the bolder pinks and the lighter pinks, that will help you adjust the play of light in this uh, rose. And adjusting that light play is exactly what's going to give you rose the dimension it needs to have it look a little bit more realistic. Now, I'm an illustrative painter, but um, this one is uh, a little bit more toward the realism side for me. Uh, you probably wouldn't call it realism at all, but I really enjoy putting in all the subtle nuances here. And uh, for someone like me who doesn't like a lot of detail, this was really enjoyable. So, um, you know, when you see a flower like a peony or a rose that has an awful lot of petals in it, my big suggestion is to you, if it looks overwhelming, go ahead and give it a try because maybe it won't be. Uh, it's kind of like doing a puzzle. You know, you just have one little petal at a time and you just keep going. <laughs> and I'm so sorry I lost the footage of when I was painting these leaves, but you'll be able to see it here in just a moment. I'm working on the background now. Um, those leaves are just a mix of hooker's green and uh, yellow ochre. I wanted to muddy it up a little bit. That was the first layer, and then I went in with some hooker's green to add the shadows. What I'm doing now is I'm just going around the entire rows with a layer of clear water, and we'll pick this back up here in just a moment. But unfortunately, I didn't have it framed correctly when I was filming it, so I'll just have to explain to you what I did here. It's all wet on wet, and then I dropped in all of the colors that I've used in the rows around the background. Maybe I can uh, make it curve just a little by putting some white. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep this mid-frame for you. There we go. All right, I'm gonna try and put some white in here to add to this, uh, where the bend on the leaf would be. And it looks like it comes up here and here. And maybe a little bit over here. And now I've got this sped up on double speed again here, but you'll see me go in with a variety of pastel pencils. I'm using uh, different shades of gray, and I've got a blue there, a green, and a pale yellow. And with all of those, I'm just adding the shadows and highlights and veins on the leaves, getting some more dimension to the stem. And I do go in at the end and add some red or a rosy color on top of the leaves in some key areas where the light would be shining through the petals and down on the leaves. So let's skip ahead to that portion. And here you can see the, uh, the pastel lead portion, the, the middle of the pencil, the pastel has broken off, so I'm just using the very little tip. It's just enough to hold on to, so I think I can get this done. Uh, we're just putting some pink on the edge of the, of the leaves there, wherever the light would be shining through the petals and have that reflection. And then we'll go ahead and finish this up here. Here it is, all finished. Just make sure if you're going to use those pastel pencils over the top that your painting's completely dry before you go in with those pencils. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I hope you have a great time, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.